and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, as you might notice in this episode, you're probably going to hear some people laughing and, and, and kind of chatting in the background uh, with me th throughout the episode. And that's because it was filmed, uh, recorded earlier in front of a live virtual stand-up comedy audience. Uh, I do uh, these shows called the Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Shows, which become episodes of Forkful of Noodles. So if you're interested in being a part of that live virtual audience, you totally can uh, by clicking the ticket link in the description below. We are going to have a bunch of these shows throughout the year, especially because I am uh, unfortunately not able to tour and go around the country like I normally do. So I've got a bunch of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows each week brand new material each week we also find a brand new grassroots organization to uh to donate to uh to to partner up with uh this for this episode we partnered up with the pittsburgh mutual aid and if you would like to donate to them there is a link in the description for that as well uh and uh if you would like to get early access to full episodes of Forkful of Noodles, both parts into one video, the, the multi-part episode. If you'd also like to see uh, what the Citizen Revolution uh, the shows are all about, the discussions that we have at the end of these shows, uh, you can do so by becoming a sustaining member. And you can go right onto my website, krishmohanhaha.com, and you can become a sustaining member there. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, become a sustaining member. You get early access to these full episodes. You get uh, unreleased stand-up comedy tracks, uh, storytelling content. You get some bonus merch. You get early access to, to my live comedy albums when I drop those. Uh, you get a bunch of cool perks, uh, and it helps the quality and quantity of these shows to improve as well. Uh, now, uh, thank you for, for tuning in. The propaganda has permeated through the culture so much that these coal companies and coal plants just wind up staying well past their welcome. And this is really where I feel like religion has failed all of us. You know, it's really astounding to me that we haven't made a full investment in solar, considering how many religions worship the damn sun. Right? I mean, if Ra or Surya, who are both sun gods, <laughs> saw our dependency on fossil fuels, they'd solar flare us out of existence. <laughs> Infidels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'd look, us, look at us and just say, hey, assholes, we kind of gave you this infinite renewable source of energy. Okay? That, that stuff wasn't meant for you guys to dig up. That's why it was buried so far under the earth. <laughs> fuck, fuck why did we even gift you guys with logic if you're just gonna do dumb shit like this oh oh good oh great you're gonna you're gonna write another country song about going to war and burning fossil fuels with your truck this is ridiculous okay yeah, we're moving to mars <laughs> yeah yeah also why does your ford f-150 need testicles what what is it is an inanimate object and does not need a gender. It's bullshit. And also, the term oh my God. is co-opted by this culture, too, uh, by normalizing ignorance and destruction, right? The term red redneck is one of solidarity for striking minors. They would tie red bandanas or neckerchiefs around their neck to signify who they were and where they stood. And this was a symbol of pride within the working class. Uh, even if we look at something like the term redneck, uh, which has been propagandized and twisted uh, to mean something different in today's world, actually comes from the labor rights background. The term redneck was started by white and black mine workers who tied on red bandanas and marched together for basic workers' rights, and actually won basic workers' rights uh, during the mine wars at the beginning of the 20th century. So it's really important to, uh, to, to bring back this radical history and let it guide uh, as we build and organize into, in our present day. Today we look at the term redneck as a slur for someone that's inbred or gun-toting and racist and kind of dumb, right? 
that definition and that definition that I just gave you is is champion right? and worn as a badge of honor in places like West Virginia, and it really comes from how popular culture has taken and warped that definition and turned ignorance into a way of life. The term redneck is co-opted by millionaire entertainers like Jeff Foxworthy, who use it as the butt of their a butt of the joke in their very famous routine, the, the you might be a redneck routine, right? Which culturally contributed to burying the real meaning of that word. And he used comedy to do it, which really makes him a traitor <laughs> to the art. You know, I take that one personally. Comedy is supposed to speak truth to power. Not I like that. <laughs> oh my God. Right? It's not it's not supposed to help fucking redefine a movement that stood up to stop tyranny. <laughs> and Jeff Foxworthy isn't even a real redneck by, the, by even his own definition of, of what a redneck is, right? He grew up in the suburbs of Atlanta. His dad had a great job with IBM and he attended Georgia Tech. Yeah, I really don't think that routine should be called you might be a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah. Ron, Ron White is the only real one of that bunch. He really that is. is true. He is really the only real He's one of that only bunch. Real one of that bunch. If Jeff Foxworthy was going to be more honest about it, he would he would change the name of that bit to "You Might Be Privileged." <laughs> <laughs> Look, Foxworthy is as much of a redneck as I am a Bollywood dancer. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 my God. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy is a turncoat and a fraud that buried the true radical history of that term. He turned it into a product and built, a, he built it into a brand to sell merch to champion ignorance. People like Jeff Foxworthy, Garth Brooks, Toby Keith are all profiting from warping the reality and telling people to take pride in their anti-intellectualism. Now, mix that pop culture in with some of the political propaganda that's out there, and you get things like the Friends of Coal. Who are the Friends of Coal, you might ask? We have something around here, and I don't know if you've ever... Friends of Coal. Any man in a right mind ought to go and look and who set that up? Who, you know, who profits from this little friend's code? We have license plates now. Uh, yeah, I tell you who likes it. Chamber of Commerce, who don't like unions, who don't like pensions, who don't like health care, because they fight against all these issues. The Chamber of Commerce fights against every, every, every one of these issues. You have the coal vendors who profit from selling to these companies, you know. That, that they understand what friends of coal means. Uh, you have your politicians who are owned by the coal companies. They understand what it means. They're the ones that help God out get gets all the shit passed, you know. Mm -hmm. So the the people that really profit from it understand what friends of coal is. If you if you live in West Virginia and write propaganda against unions, pensions, Medicare for all, and convince the people to give up their land for the destruction of nature, then you might be a friend of coal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you send me the link? <laughs> that one segment is better than all of Jeff Foxworthy's specials. <laughs> And I've noticed two kinds of vehicles that have those glass plates on. And I think it pretty well describes what what it is. You either pass a big black suburban that cost about fifty five or sixty thousand dollars and you'll see that friends of gold license plate on the back of it. Or you'll pass some little guy in an eighty four S ten with the fenders falling off of it with a friends of gold license plate. When the first vehicle you passed really understood understood what a friend called one. He he understood why he had that last plate. The other guy that was driving that eighty four S ten with the fenders falling off didn't understand it. What he really needed was a friend of coal miners license plate, you know. But he didn't understand that. 
And I think that's what they've done to us around here is propaganda. Uh, Those folks are the ones that get excited when Trump says things like, oh, we're bringing back coal. We're going to bring back coal. And look, in this one instance, I don't think Trump is lying. He is going to bring back coal. By continuing to pump propaganda for these tree killers, we might fund our own extinction. So in a few million years, our fossilized remains can turn into coal you know, like for a society that's moved on from this destructive fuel source and is now using a combination of solar and wind and looks at our era as the dark ages. So in that way, you know, he's not lying. <laughs> he's going to make more coal, just not for us. And that's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon. Make sure you get notifications from us. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Get the word out about this show. Uh, content like this is often suppressed on a lot of the more mainstream corporate uh, video platforms. Uh, so, uh, and I think you guys know which one I'm talking about. Uh, so I depend on you guys to to hit that like button, hit that share button, get the word out about these uh, uh, about these videos, about these shows. Uh, and uh, there's also multiple different ways that you can you can support a show like this. Uh, if you listen to the audio version of this show, you can write a review. If you listen to the video version, you can leave a comment. All of that stuff helps it uh, get get seen by more people. Uh, but one of the things. Um, that you can do to financially contribute is either make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. Uh, sustaining members get uh, early access to full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. You get early access to albums. You get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, you get a bunch of cool stuff uh, every single week delivered directly into either your email or on the Patreon page. Various different ways where you can become a sustaining member. You can become a sustaining member uh on on patreon on paypal on directly on my website itself uh you can become a sustaining member on on bandcamp various different ways that you can do it uh this just helps shows like this grow and uh it, it just makes the quality and quantity of the show get better and better uh, i'm going to be doing a bunch of of these uh, these live virtual stand-up comedy shows, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show. So uh, go to my website and uh, and check out when the next one is, especially if you want to be a part of the live virtual stand-up comedy audience. Go to krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com to check out all of the, 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 the live virtual stand-up comedy dates the uh, sustaining memberships. My album is available on, on my website as well. There's a bunch of cool shit on there. Uh, we're we're, we're going to be throwing up a bunch of videos on this channel. Um, various different kinds of videos. Videos like Forkful of Noodles, more current events related videos, more looser ranty videos uh, as well. So there's a ton of content that comes out on this channel. Uh, we have, we're going to have some interviews that are going to be coming out as well. So uh, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're getting notifications. Uh, until the next one, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.